Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hazardous Artist series. I am Melly, and we're going to dive right back into the background for the baby birds. So how is everyone this week? I am recording before Thanksgiving, but I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm sure I'll have a story time ready for you all in the next Hazardous Artist video. So let's get started on the baby birds. I am very happy with this piece. The background is exactly in the style I want it to be. And I'm very just, yes. <laughs> uh, words are very difficult for me for some reason. They always have been, but it's always, um, it's, it's just interesting, I guess. When I lose my train of thought midway through, I hope I am not the only one who has this problem of losing their train of thought in the middle of whatever they're talking about. I have been having such an unusual week so far. It's only like the second day though. So, um, but I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about this game I've been playing that I was super addicted to for a while. And, um, I'm sure that if you've watched any, watched, if you've, um, seen any of my Facebook posts about it, I'm sure you've been curious. Uh, I've been playing a lot of my time at Porsche, and it's a wonderful ASMR game for me. I am really big into these types of games. It's a, kind of like if you took, um... It's story of seasons and harvest moon and you put it together and you added crafting and building elements to the game as well as social interactions with villagers that's pretty much what this game is all about and i'm you can romance characters you can marry them just like you could in harvest moon story of seasons and all those games alike and um as well as have all these really interesting interactions with said uh villagers uh, or townspeople really and then it has a bit of a story there is a kind of sort of a plot and I really enjoyed it um you get to fight creatures and monsters and go do some dungeon it's definitely more of a family friendly type of game than it is um like a children's game or anything like that because all of the artwork, the animations and everything is very uh, childlike. It's very, very playful. I shouldn't say childlike because, um, yes. <laughs> so, I started out the game and I actually restarted because I had a file originally. But I haven't played it in such a long time. I didn't know where I was in the story so I just decided I was gonna just redo the whole the whole save file and start over and I'm kind of glad I did um I definitely like the when I play these types of games I like to hoard my materials anyway so and building a lot of um things that are you know that pertain to the story you get to re help rebuild some of the town and build some buildings and it's always funny to me because you take guild commissions like the guild is like a um it's called the commerce guild it's for builders which i become at the beginning of the story i take over my father's workshop and i become a builder i guess uh in the beginning they don't really say this but it makes you feel like that the character that you're portraying has lost their way whether you're doing a male or female, um, and you, your character seems to have lost their way, and you're trying to find your meaning in life kind of thing, and it's kind of cute, you know, with that type of aspect, so I was really enjoying the game, and there are certain aspects of the game I really enjoy as well. They have, and then I haven't tested this theory yet, but they really kind of insinuate it. And maybe I will test it out. And if you guys know, definitely let me know if this actually can happen. But I think you can have a relationship with someone of the same sex. And that would be quite progressive for a game of that caliber. I would be 
ecstatic if you could do that. And the only reason why I said I insinuate this because I actually had a uh, an opposite sex partner because Arlo is bay. Um, is because when you go through your character uh, social gauge uh, through your you know main menu of the game, there's hearts for people you can romance and stars for people you cannot romance, and um, I noticed that a lot of the same sex characters have hearts. And that's why I'm thinking maybe you can romance same-sex characters. And that would be really, really progressive for this type of game. And I would be absolutely ecstatic if you could romance. Because that just, that would blow my mind for a game like this. Considering how everything in the world is right now. So, I haven't tested that theory. And maybe I will because that just sounds like a fantastic thing to have for this game, but, um, I kinda, I beat the game, and I'm kinda lost my way with the game, so I probably won't play it for a really long time, not until, you know, like, probably a year, <laughs> that's generally how long it takes me to get back into the game I've played, but, yeah, so that was an interesting aspect. There are other things that go on with this game. You can go on dates with your um, quote quote significant other, and you could unfortunately dump them too, which I think is kind of uh, funny in a way because you can get married to them and then divorce them, and that's <laughs> that's so wrong, but it's so funny that they have that type of mechanic in the game. But um, and then there are. You can have mounts in the game other than horses, and I I think that's, oh, that's so amazing for me because there's this particular mount that I have, and I was really happy because you can trap them, and then you can befriend them, and then you can use them as mounts, and I treat my mount like my baby because it is. It's called a cotton llama. A lot of the names for these creatures in the game are very childlike, but so... <laughs> I lost my train of thought. My mount is called the Cotton Llama, and it is a white llama, and it has triangular sunglasses, and it has a cutesy little uh, headband. And if you defeat the Cotton Llama, normally you can you have a chance to get a um to get their headband and their sunglasses and. That's just, it's so cool. I really enjoy that aspect. And, um, it's, so I have a cotton llama, and it's absolutely just mm, fantastic. And it is most definitely my baby, but it is much larger than a regular llama. Like, there is no way a llama is that big in real life, and especially compared to my character. But, you know, like, it's a video game, so... And it's a cute video game. It's not a uh, a serious video game. It's definitely a cute video game. So Cotton Llama. They also have Colorful Llamas, which is just a really pretty looking llama. And, it, you know, there's, there's aspects of the game that you kind of wish didn't exist. Like, uh, to get certain materials to build certain things in the game, you have to defeat the Cotton Llama. And when you fight them and you defeat them, they have the most puppy dog eye horror on their face when you defeat them. And I just feel so terrible. And I'm like, but I have to have this particular item that only or it's only dropped by this particular animal. And it's 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 it could be hard. It could definitely be hard. But it's definitely a fun game. It's definitely a ASMR game for me because I love those types of games where it's laid back and everything. And with my time at Porsche even, so past all the relationships and the including friendships and everything, not just romantic relationships, but uh, past all of that and getting mounts and... Um, having a farm if you want to. It's not necessarily a mandatory thing in my time at Porsche. You can 
most definitely probably get away without having a farm. I have a couple, I have a tree farm, but that's because uh, it's much easier to have a tree farm than to constantly look for the materials out in the wild. So, yes. <laughs> um, another aspect of the game that I really, really enjoy is that there are four months, quote unquote, for a year in my time at Portia versus, uh, which is kind of the same for Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon has about uh, f three or four months for theirs as well. It pertains to the season, so they have spring, summer, fall, and winter. So it's, it's the same for my time at Portia as well. They have a spring, a summer, a fall, and a winter. But each season has a very um, a global event that happens. And I say global, but I really mean like a My Time at Porsche global event that happens every season. In the springtime, they have a uh, gift dropping uh, event where gifts drop from the from a blimp pretty much and you have to race the other characters to pick up these gifts and you can uh, put in a gift for the event which you don't necessarily have to but you do get a lot of uh, relationship points if you do and so I think it's worth it because you don't need to put anything expensive in it. I usually put crafting items in it because there's a couple builders in the town so I always think to myself, it's kind of weird that I think like this, but I always think, I just want to help the townspeople. And, um, so, <laughs> yeah. And then in the summer, they have the, uh, they have like a Day of the Dead kind of thing, which I think is absolutely adorable. They want to remember the people that have passed. They want to remember their uh, hero that brought them the sun after the age of darkness and all that good stuff and what you do is and it always reminds me of tangled with the lanterns but you you shoot off the lanterns into the sky and you you watch them and it's so beautiful i always thought that scene in tangled was so immaculate for me I don't. I love the stars, and I love watching fireflies. So just seeing lanterns like that, just it brings out a lot of dopamine and serotonin. <laughs> um, so that's with that, and then they have like a spooky um, event too for Halloween, where you get to run around town and have this water gun, pretty much, and shoot at other. Uh, townspeople and then try to collect as many ghost badges as you can without getting hit with a water gun or by a quote-unquote ghost which is just a um, mechanic like a mechanical type of thing <laughs> and that always entertains me because I always I never can find the water gun so I'm always just the last person to ever I would never. I I've played through three years of the game so far, and I have never found the water gun. So I always try to hide from other villagers and try and pick up the um the ghost badges before they can even begin to think where I've been. But I always get caught by the farmer McDonald. Yes, the farmer in the game is named McDonald. Don't. That was really punny when I saw that, but it's it's such a cute Easter egg. But I always get pegged by McDonald with the water gun, and I always go, "Darn you, McDonald!" Well, in more of a uh, an adult language kind of. If you know, you know. I'm not gonna get into details about the language I use in the game sometimes, cause this is supposed to be inappropriate. Uh, episode just like all my other hazardous artist episodes so I think that's a cute little event that happens and then you can have the haunted um, the haunted cave that you have to clear out near the beginning of the game and that's an okay game I think it's funny because I have to get crystals in there sometimes and then it's like fine I'll pay the fee to get in but I'm only here for the crystals and you have to dodge ghosts and 
all the like. You can even take your date there, but they don't really help you fight, which I think is pretty disappointing. I really wish a Porsche would actually add in that your date can also play the game with you. So anyway, um, so you have the haunting. Then. And then in the fall, you have this harvest event, this harv this bountiful harvest event. And I forgot what it was called, but you pretty much, you have the biggest crop contest, and then you can, you have the who can cook it better contest. And then it goes into more of a, oh no, I think the hot pot is in the winter. So that's what goes on in the fall. And then in winter, you have the hot pot, which is, I think is kind of gross. And not gross as in really, really disgusting. But the hot pot is you, uh, you and the villagers, you go in and there's this giant pot in the middle of town. And you can just randomly throw ingredients in there and taste it. And nobody goes hungry that day. But to me, that's a little gross because some people just put in... Some of the townspeople just put in the random, randomest uh, ingredients into this hot pot. And if you see, there's certain aspects too. Like, if you see another person and they're like, I really want this ingredient in there. If you throw that particular ingredient in there, you get relationship points based off of that. And I think that's pretty cool. But when you're sitting there and they want meat and then followed by like rhubarb. Um, we have problems, okay? Those don't mix. So, <laughs> and so it's, it's cute. And then they have the solstice, um, festival, which is, um, that's pretty much the hot pot. And then you have the snowball fights, which I am not good at the snowball fights at all. I am terrible at the snowball fight. But I, I do because I like the rewards. I like uh, when you get rewards because anytime you do an event, you get rewards. When you get the rewards, which are the event badges, you can get certain things from that event, turning in, exchanging your badges for them. And the Winter Solstice badges are always my favorite because I love the snowmen that are always attached to them. So, yes, they're always going to be my favorites and no one's going to change myself my mind about it. I have all of the snowmen. I'm probably going to get more if I play the game again. Um, so. <laughs> and then, oh, and I, there was another event in the spring time. Uh, it's the martial arts tournament, and you can, you can fist fight other members of the town, which I think is absolutely fantastic, because, um, I, you don't have to defeat them in battle or anything. You can just literally hit them once and run around, which I've done my first year. And only because I got paired up with someone that was level 50. Yeah, there's a leveling system. It's great. Um, I got paired with someone who was level 50, and there was no way I was going to... I was maybe level 15, I think, at the time. There was no way I was going to beat them, and I really wanted first prize. Because I want to be the champion of everything. So... <laughs> I hit him once and I ran around like a like a little wussy. Uh, but I did win that that year. So I'm pretty proud of myself for that. <laughs> Even if it was cheesing the game a little bit. So those are just you know those are fun aspects and not to mention the storyline plot um stuff that happens when they go through their storylines in the game. Um one of the fantastic things about Portia is that when you happen to go through the storyline and you build the thing that you need to build to continue the storyline, uh, one of my favorite things about this particular game in that aspect is that the cutscenes uh, take a picture for you and you can store it in this photo album on your main menu and you can go back and go, hey, that's kind of cool later in life. I've done, I've done that a couple of times, so I mean... I'm kind of a cheeser. I like the game really a, a lot, so. <laughs> or I was super addicted to it, so. Um, but I did that a lot of times. So I think that's a really cool aspect to take pictures of um, the cutscenes. You can even take pictures outside of that. Like if you interact with one town's member and your relationship level is uh, at a decent level, you don't have to be exactly buddy buddy with them to get this particular. Um, thing to happen, but you can take group photos, but then you can 
do little poses and I think that's so cute that you can do poses. I did it with the mayor and I <laughs> I really really enjoy the mayor. He cracks me up and he's so adorable too. Like a lot of the characters are truly truly adorable. And um you and with every game like this there's always a playboy and and when I was playing, I unknowingly became his friend. But the, he's one of the uh, construction company guys, so a lot of the main quest lines involve him. And so you kind of don't have a choice but to help him. And so every time you complete any work uh, builder related, uh, oh my gosh, mission. I'm going to say mission. That's not the word I want to use, but I, I lost my train of thought and I lost the word. So anytime you complete a mission um, involving anybody in town, you gain relationship points with them and... I unknowingly increase my relationship points with him. He's not exactly my favorite character. He is adorable in some aspects, but he can come off as creepy too. And I'm like, uh, sir, excuse you, sir. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask you to calm down a little bit and not approach my house. Um, but like I said, it's it's a family friendly game, so I'm sure that he's not supposed to come off like that, but. He does. Ah, but I romance Arlo because he's the he, he's uh, Portia Bay. <laughs> he's the leader of the Civil Corps for Portia, which is a um, an organization that helps to protect Portia from creatures, aggressive creatures, and AIs and the like. And yeah, I, I couldn't help myself. He's got a really nice accent. He's really sweet. And how could you not like Arlo? <laughs> but yeah, so that was the game I was addicted to for some time. This is a really long episode, so uh, I just couldn't help myself. I told you guys I was going to talk about this, and... I felt bad that I didn't talk about it the last time, so we're going to talk about it today. Uh, thank you guys for listening to me rant about this game. 10 out of 10 would recommend it to anybody who enjoys Harvest Moon and Storia Seasons. Um, trying to think of other games that are similar. What's that one? Uh, Stardew Valley. If you guys like those games, Portia is definitely a game you should definitely try. It is more... Kitty than other than Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons or Stardew Valley or any of those other uh, games, but I think you'd re really enjoy it. It's got that cute atmosphere to it that you just it it draws you in, and sometimes you just need to play a game that's a little light on the atmosphere, and that's what this game is about. The main plot of um, Portia though does get a little bit dramatic. And not dramatic, like bad dramatic, but um, you end up fighting this really tough character. And they tr they're they trying to pretty much destroy the, the town, literally and figuratively. And yeah, it's just, it, it gets quite dramatic at that point. But it's not until like way later in the game. And so the first half of the game is just you trying to... Make your name known and beat Higgins because Higgins is such a, uh, he's your rival and he's, he could be a jerk, but he turns out to be an okay guy near the end of the game. So, but yeah, Forsha, and thank you guys for listening to me rant. I got pretty far in this, uh, piece, so I'm hoping to finish it in the next video of... Hazardous artists, we can finally have our baby burbs in their environment, and that makes me really happy. I'm really happy with how this is turning out, actually. And I hope you guys join me in the next episode while we go through this. While wow, I just 25 minutes, <laughs> I am really into Porsche. So, thank you, thank you. If you went through all of this, thank you so much for listening to me rant about the game I was addicted to for months. I'm now addicted back to Animal Crossing. But 
I just want to let you guys know the holidays are coming up. I really do hope you had a great Thanksgiving. If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you had a great day either way. I know that Thanksgiving is one of those holidays that's a give and take for some people due to the uh, truth of behind the history of Thanksgiving. So I really hope you had a wonderful day that day regardless of your beliefs. Um, my store, my Etsy store does have new products in it in time for the holiday season. I hope to add more as the week draws on and before December. So, um, you'll see the updates on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for when those items do become available to you. So I hope that you follow me on those social media platforms to get your updates as well as I have new items in my Melslawcomics.com store. I have the mystery boxes, which has a little bit of everything from prints to keychains to buttons. So I really hope that you go and look at that as well. The picture I took, I really enjoy. So <laughs> I'm pretty proud of the picture I took for that product. So just in time for Christmas, if you were thinking about trying to shop for relatives, friends, and the like, definitely recommend that you go check out my stores. And I will talk to you guys not next week, but the week after. And yes, I hope you have a wonderful week. And until we meet again, dare to create.